What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I hope you guys are doing well. Make sure to leave a like on this video, comment below if you're new to the channel. You gotta subscribe, it's that simple. So today we'll be looking at the B450 Gaming ITX slash AC. Now this is an unusual board. It is a ASRock board. Um, I usually don't recommend ASRock boards to people. They have a tendency to not be very reliable. Um, out of my 10 years of building computers, I have found that ASRock tends to be very unreliable sometimes. But I do hear very good things about their mini ITX board. Now this is a B450 chipset. It is a 2000 series Ryzen, if you were wondering. Uh, I'm just going to kind of rattle off some facts about it. This is their Fatality board, which is on their higher end of their gaming line. It does have Wi-Fi 802.11ac, typical Wi-Fi. It comes with a Wi-Fi adapter cord and everything else. It has their Polychrome RGB, which is their built your own colorful lighting system, latest RGB LED headers and addressable LEDs. That is one thing I would have to say about this thing. Look at all of the addressable LED headers on it. Right there, right there. Um, there's even one down here. So you have three LED addressable headers. It looks like you have one, two, two, two fan headers, three fan headers. I, I see three. I see the CPU, a side one, and one down here at the bottom. Four SATA 6 gigabit ports. It takes an eight pin and a standard 24 pin now the reason why you would want something like this is for your small form factor builds if you don't want to lug around a giant tower you can use this platform and build something smaller it is a very nice feature to have that's for sure it does have intel lan which is a better performance chipset it does have their nikon audio chipset which is um what that is right there um, on the side for I.O., which let's turn it and we'll view some of the I.O. here. On the side right here, you have USB 3.0 Gen 1, USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C, HDMI display port, PS2 mouse, USB 2.0, and then Fatality mouse port, which is what that is. I've never heard of that. That's kind of cool, actually, Fatality mouse port. Um, let's see here. What else? It has M.2 on it. That's M.2 32 gig PCI Gen 3 times 4, which is a SATA 3 connection. Um, where does that go? Hmm. Where does the M.2 go? I'm wondering. I don't see an M.2 on here. Do you? No, I do not. I don't see an M.2 on this board anywhere unless it's hidden or it's on the back side of the board. Oh yes, look, it's right there. It's on the backs. Wow, that's unusual. I didn't know. I, <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, I don't see it on the front. It's actually right there. There's your M.2 slot and then there's your, um, your anchor point for it. So there's your M.2 slot. It's on the back. Didn't know that, but now we do on the back. All right, well, let's flip it back over and take another look at it. Desktop, not only does this hold AMD Ryzen 2000 series, but it also supports Athlon 2X G series and AMD Raven Ridge 2 Ready. It does have their Sound Blaster Cinema series along with their Nico Audio. So you have a Sound Blaster audio chip and along with their Nico Audio port. So you should have very good sounds out of this board. Um, although it was funny though, because when I got the box for it, somebody stuck um, a Ryzen 3000 desktop ready sticker on it, which uh, that's not correct. See, it says right there, a Ryzen 3000 series and then Ryzen 2000 series, but this is a sticker. So somebody put that on there. That's not right. That's kind of deceiving for anybody that doesn't know better, but it's not. It's a 2000 series desktop ready. If you wanted to go to a 3000, I don't think a simple BIOS would fix this. I think what you would have to do is just get a whole nother motherboard that will fit the criteria of it. You know, this board is really for a particular group of people. Um, I find it to be, you know, 
on the smaller end of things, but it really won't support too much. Uh, you know, you don't, when you get to a smaller board like this, you lose some of the form factor or some of the perks of having an ATX or a bigger board. I do like how the, look at that, the CMOS chip. I do like how it's like plugged in there so they can make room for it instead of it being physically on the board they uh, they got it kind of glued in right there which is not good because if this chip if this battery was to fail you would have to go out and try to find another one like this you couldn't just pop it out and pop it in because they have it as a sealed wired in unit so that's something food for thought if that battery fails then the motherboard won't work so then you will have to go out and try to find another one of these or maybe you can make your own i don't know i do notice that the pci express or the motherboard slot is reinforced with steel see that it has a reinforced metal that's good because most graphics cards are very heavy and you don't want a lot of weight on these pci express ports because what happens is after a while they loosen and bend and weaken and then you lose performance or it just doesn't work at all and you don't want that um, it does have I already talked about the SATA the USB ports it has a 7.1 channel audio which we talked about it supports creative sound blaster cinema 5 and it does and it you can use a sound card with it that's interesting 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi um, has B242 modules in them, um, which are some of these over here. These right here will be all your power delivery for your CPU. You have power delivery up here, um, and then you have power delivery here. So I wouldn't put a Ryzen 7 in it. I'd probably put a Ryzen 5 in it. You got to remember, it is a B450 chipset, so it could technically handle it. But at the same time, you do start to lose certain things when you have to make a board this small. It's, it's just what happens, you know. I do like it. It's very nice. There's your high capacity auto Japanese capacitors down there. Those are really nice. That looks pretty cool. I do like how they're, when they pass inspection, they just stuck okay on the side of it. That's pretty nice. I like that. That's cool. Underneath here is your B450 chipset. That's why they got this heat sink on it and stuff. Um, I do wish that there was a little bit more, but what do you expect when you go to this style of form factor? It only takes two, so it is single channel. It's not dual channel, which that's okay. There's no big deal. It will allow you to go up to, I think, 32 gigs was the most that this board could handle. That's something you have to look into. Um, it will handle up to 34, 66 megahertz. So a 3600 kit won't work for this board. So you, once again, you're kind of limited to the size and the form factor. So yeah, once you give up all that extra space, you do compromise for certain things. And that is something that you need to remember that you are compromising for something. Um, other than that, man, I really ain't got too much to say about this board. We are going to do a build on this board here real soon. Whenever we get around to it, we do have a couple of them in line right now. And then once we get to this one, um, we'll probably do a like fish tank build or something like that where we put it in um, kind of like a fish tank apparatus idea. That was the idea that I had behind it was something like that. It's about the size of my hand. See that? My whole hand covers the entire board, which is crazy. Um, you do need to be careful with AMD. These have a tendency to crack and break the doors or the bridges. The, the, yeah, the door, whatever you want to call it, this part. You got to be careful with those. Those will break on you. If you guys have any questions or comments, tell me below. I would love to hear from you. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. This was just a quick review of it. I really just kind of wanted to show it to you guys and see what y'all had to think about it or what you have to say about it. Make sure to check out some of my other videos. Leave a like on this. If you have any questions, tell me. Let me know. All right, I think I'm just repeating myself now. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. If you guys want to know what's in the box, it's the typical stuff. Nothing really too exciting. It just comes with all the 
typical stuff you know you got your manual now there was one thing in here that I thought was kind of odd you have your manual and then that's for your motherboard and then you have a manual for the BIOS which is nice because ASRock BIOS are very weird to use and navigate um, they're kind of self-explained they have gotten better over the years but they can be kind of difficult to navigate I keep shutting that here you go this is the weird part check this out see it says ASRock facility it's a postcard that's odd I didn't I would expect to find a postcard in a mother box or a motherboard box this is uh what year is it 2018 so this was manufactured in 2018 here's your io shield it's of course the typical red black cover that's what all asrock goes with uh let's see here you got your sata port there's your um, wi-fi antenna that comes standard with them and then you have your driver disc and then there's your screw for your M.2. That's very important. Don't lose that. That right there is one of the hardest screws that you can replace is that little M.2 screw. And then, of course, you have your driver's disc. And there should be yet one more. One more antenna. Yeah, you get dual antenna. You get 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. That's why it comes with two antennas. So you get dual band in it. There's nothing else in the box. Yep, that's it. Alrighty, well, I'm done with this. I appreciate you guys. Uh, oh, look, wait a minute. There's an ASRock sticker right there. That's cool. You get a sticker with it, too. Alright, well, I'm out of here. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Y'all be cool.